uh, here. First, I want to uh, go ahead and share with you all a PDF of today's web event. On your screen, you probably just saw a um, selection come up or pop up um, here where it will allow for you to easily get access to the PDF of today's presentation. So you can simply click on the file, and when you select the file, select download, and it should be able to download directly to your uh, computer or device that you're joining from there. If you're having any issues accessing that document, please note that we will provide a um, Google Drive link where you can simply click on the link and get access to the document there. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do before we get started, I am going to go ahead and add uh, the multimedia feature, which will include our closed captioning for today's event. And so you all should see shortly a caption, a uh, box that will come up at the very bottom of your control panel. And in that box, you'll be able to see the closed caption for today. So let me get that up here. And again, it's going to come in the form of a shared multimedia file that you will see at the bottom of your, your uh, control panel there. And perfect. So now we have closed captioning there. So any individuals who may be deaf or hard of hearing or having audio issues joining today's web event, you all will be able to see the live caption there. And then finally, before we get started and more people are joining here, welcome to those who just uh, joined us here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and open up a quick poll question for our audience to do while I'm doing the, the housekeeping slides here. And this poll question is very simple. We basically want to know your current knowledge. Um, how would you rate your current knowledge uh, related to today's web event topic? Um, you have the option of none, minimal, moderate, extensive. So uh, please take a moment to go ahead and complete uh, that poll uh, question here. All right. So that being said, uh, it is uh, about a minute over 11 o'clock. I do not want to impede on any time for our presenters. So we'll go ahead and get started. So uh, again, welcome to everyone, and thank you for joining today's Title II uh, Formula Program Solicitation Part II uh, Compliance. My name is William Moore with OJJDP's Intact, and before we get started, there's a few housekeeping items I would like to um, provide for folks to keep in mind. Please note that we are indeed recording today's web event. Uh, this webinar may be available on OJJDP's multimedia page. On this page, you can also view additional webinars on juvenile justice and child victimization and prevention related topics. For any supporting materials, please reach out to the OJJDP TTA Help Desk. If you're having trouble downloading the event materials that I provided earlier, please uh, note that we are placing a Google link inside of the chat. Here on that Google link, you can simply click on that link or copy and paste that link into the browser of your choice, and it will allow you access to a PDF of today's uh, webinar material or presentation. If you're still having trouble between the transfer file and the Google uh, link there, then please contact the OJJDP TTA Help Desk, and we would be more than happy to make sure that you get access to uh, the PDF of today's presentation. For optimal audio, we are asking uh, individuals to please dial out through the WebEx phone line. Uh, I would suggest using the call me at option where you can simply put in a telephone number and the WebEx system will call you and connect you to the audio, uh, or you can use your computer audio. Uh, please note that a phone or a telephone icon will appear next to your name contingent on how you thought, uh, dial in, into today's web event. Please note that all attendees are on mute. If you're experiencing any technical difficulties during the pre presentation, then please send me a private chat and I'll be more than happy to assist. Now, during today's web event, we will uh, take questions from the audience related to the solicitation. 
when you type your question, we're asking for you to first type your question to, into the chat window. Make sure the arrow is pointing down and you have access to that chat window there. Um, type your question. However, prior to sending your question, please make sure that you select everyone or all panelists and then hit send. That will ensure that all panelists are able to see your question that you have, that you've uh, provided. So again, go to the chat, type your question related to today's presentation, but before hitting send, please be sure to select everyone or all panelists in the to field before hitting send. So we'll practice that now. Um, please help us count. If you're viewing by yourself, there's no need to do anything at this time. However, if you're viewing in a group, please go to the chat window and type in the total number of additional people in the room with you today. So, for example, if you're viewing with, say, your uh, program manager uh, that's with you, you would put in plus one. If you're viewing by yourself, there's no need to type anything at this time. That being said, I'll go ahead and turn over today's presentation to our uh, moderator, Keith, to take over today's event. Keith, I am passing the uh, virtual ball over to you, and whenever you're ready, you can take it away. Thank you. And Keith, uh, please uh, keep in mind, you may be double muted. <laughs> Yep, and that's exactly the situation. Thank you so much. Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, I do see that I have uh, the pleasure of having our supervisor online, and I'm wondering if um, Dr. Bradford, if you want to come and um, give a welcome before we kick off the solicitation webinar. Thanks, Keith. Can you all hear me? Good morning. Good to be back. Can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, we can hear you. <laughs> okay, great. Well, welcome. I don't want to take up all your time. Again, I said Tuesday, excited to have um, the webinars finally occur. I'm going to uh, uh, give a few closing remarks if I have some announcements. I may have some pending announcements. But other than that, welcome. Excited to be moving forward with part two, and I will pass the baton back to you, Keith. Thank you so much, Dr. Bradford. Um, so, Let's get this party started today. So today you're going to hear from myself. You're going to hear from my colleagues, Tina Warner, and also DDA Monsion. So um, the Office of Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention is within the Office of Justice Programs. It's our bigger office. Right here we have a chart to kind of show you exactly where we sit um, and how our internal structure um, within OJP follows. You'll see that the orange block is exactly where we're situated. Um, you see that we report to the Office of the Assistant Attorney General, and you see our sister, our component agencies, such as BJA, BJS, NIJ, OVC, and um, the Office of Sex Offenders Missing Monitor Monitoring, Apprehensive Registration, and Tracking. So, um, you know, we always think that this is a great anchoring point for folks, so you can just see how um, our internal structure operates. The Office of Justice Programs are composed of these agencies that I just listed. You may have grants with these particular agencies, or you may have worked with these particular agencies or looked at some of their um, programs in the past. Uh, but, you know, we're all fall underneath the umbrella of Office of Justice Programs. Our vision at OJJP um, is we envision a nation where our children are free from crime and violence. If they come into contact with the justice system, the contact should be both just and beneficial to them. Our mission, we provide national leadership, coordination, and resources to prevent and respond to juvenile delinquency and victimization. OJJDP supports the efforts of states, tribes, and communities to develop and implement effective and equitable juvenile justice systems that enhance public safety, ensures youth are held appropriately accountable to both crimes and victims of communities, 
and empower youth to live productive while abiding life. Today for our webinar objective, we wanna make sure that we give you a very general overview of the 20, FY21 Title II formula program solicitation. We are paying close attention to the compliance element. The last webinar that was conducted on uh, two days ago, you learned about the programmatic side of the house. But today we're only talking about compliance elements. We wanna make sure that you understand all of the required compliance documents and their forms for submission. We're gonna review some of the RET requirements. However, yesterday during um, Tina's um, excellent presentation, you've learned more in detail about what's required. So we'll just be kind of reviewing that today. And then we'll talk about the compliance monitoring too, but review. And um, I hope you guys noticed, and I also hope that the field appreciates this year, we've done an excellent job in ensuring that we've provided multiple opportunities for training, such as modules that we've created, um, such as um, the informational emails we've been sending out, and also um, your program managers reaching out to you to ensure that you um, are comfortable with this process. So we do ask that today, if you do have questions, when you're typing the questions, if they're not related to the solicitation per se, send an email to your program manager. So you can work with your program manager to take care of any unique situations. We'll try our best to answer as many questions as we have, but we really wanna make sure that we devote today, this time today to answering solicitation related questions. So thank you in advance for understanding that. Our solicitation uh, web link is here. Um, if you can't, uh, if you need access to the, to the actual solicitation, um, we can drop the actual link into the chat so you can see it, but we wanna cue you into the, the key dates. Applications are due July 13th, 2021, 11.59 p.m. Eastern time. Um, if you need a request, you gotta get that request in very soon as the deadline to request the extension is tomorrow. However, if you do ask for extension and if it's granted, um, you will have up until August 12, 2021 at 11.59 Eastern time. It's very essential, it's very crucial that if you need a request to an extension, you do so ASAP. Um, you only have until tomorrow to request that. At that point, it'll be too late. Um, so with that, I am gonna get ready to turn the controls and the slides over to Tina Warner. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's an absolute pleasure for the compliance team to be able to provide and go over this information to ensure that each state has the information it needs to know what is going to be needed uh, and supplied for, uh, for compliance um, related documentation. So this slide here goes over um, the files that are uh, required, um, that very top um, hyperlink goes into the Title II solicitation files, which houses many of these forms and bits of information that you may need in order to complete your submission of compliance-related data. So. We will be talking about um, each one of these items, uh, the training policy certification, the compliance monitoring data certification, the rule removal exception certification, if that's applicable to you, your racial and ethnic disparities core requirement plan and supporting documentation, um, a plan for compliance monitoring, describing an effective system of monitoring, your compliance monitoring universe, as well as the compliance plans and resources certification where applicable. One of the things that I want to emphasize here as well um, is the um, compliance manual will also need to be uploaded as a part of the uh, compliance monitoring tool. Okay, so 
we're, I'm just going to talk just briefly about what it is that OGJDP looks at to determine uh, a state's eligibility. So we have um, the state's eligibility status will be confirmed by certifying that the state is in compliance with the core requirements, which is DSO, the institutionalization of status offenders, the sight and sound separation, the jail removal core requirement, as well as the racial and ethnic disparities core requirement. The uh, state must satisfy or certify that there are adequate plans and resources to maintain compliance with the core requirements. They have to talk about and demonstrate the eight elements of an effective system of monitoring are present in the state plan. And again, the racial and ethnic disparity data reporting and planning has to be included in um, the submission. So in the compliance monitoring tool, again, we have shown here in a way um, that it's possible for that you to know the actual documentations, forms, and certifications that are going to be needed and are necessary in order to have a complete compliance data element submitted to um, OJJDP. So as well as the uh, five pieces that you just saw in the previous slide, the plan for compliance monitoring uh, describing an effective system of monitoring is required and detailed here. This document, uh, an updated copy of the state's comprehensive compliance monitoring policies and procedures manual can suffice to meet this requirement as long as all eight elements of an effective system are fully addressed within that manual. So you do not have to supply us with a separate plan if everything is identified within your policies and procedures manual, that will be okay. Compliance, uh, we're going to talk just briefly about the um, compliance monitoring universe. And there is one extra document that is going to be required, um, and it was uh, accidentally left off of this slide is that the state has to supply us with a plan of how the state is going to implement the interest of justice requirement. And so that is another document that will be required as a part of your compliance submission. So the eight elements of an effective system, uh, they are laid out here. This is. This should not be anything new. We have talked about this, these eight elements for uh, quite a while. But again, if you are going to, if the state is going to use uh, their compliance manual as a way of describing each of these elements, each one of these eight elements needs to be addressed within the compliance manual. Okay, I'm just going to talk very briefly about the compliance monitoring universe. We want to ensure that a state has uh, included all secure facilities that may detain juveniles pursuant to law enforcement or criminal or juvenile court authorities. So the, the, uh, the facility types that are subtypes that are listed down here are adult jails and lockups, court holding facilities, juvenile detention facilities, juvenile correctional facilities, prison, and co-located um, facilities. Okay, that is it for me, and I'm gonna pass the baton, or the baton needs to be passed to BDA Monsignor. Good morning, everyone, and, and thank you, Tina, for explaining uh, in depth uh, the process for uh, the folks here in the uh, session. 
we're going to move along and we're going to talk about the various certifications that you're going to need to supply uh, within your submission this year. Um, these are all very critical pieces that uh, you uh, will be outlined in additional slides as we move forward. So your first certification and, and, and the few that are here are identified as your training policy certification, your compliance monitoring data certification, your rural removal exception certification that's if it's applicable, as well as your compliance plans and resources where applicable. Now, uh, moving forward, um, the training certification uh, 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 form uh, is shown here on the on the slide, but this here shows that the state certifies that that they have a policy in effect that speaks to staff that work with juveniles and adults are are, are duly certified, and uh, it is countersigned by your uh, DSA or or their designee uh, to certify that this is in fact is in place. And so the areas that uh, it covers specifically are in uh, your areas in uh, jail removal and sight and sound separation. Um, so very important that when you submit this, it is one that we tend to, to overlook, but it's very important that you submit this with your uh, with your with your package uh, for consideration and review. In addition, uh, you have your rural excuse me, your rural removal exception form, and that speaks to uh, uh, your 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 towns that may have maybe spread out. And to qualify that, you have to be outside of your metropolitan statistical area as defined by OMB, uh, and that these facilities uh, have no acceptable alternative uh, placement. So what that may look like traditionally, if you have a, a, a town that's really kind of remote and out there, and there is no uh, reasonable, uh, they cannot re uh, reach a uh, juvenile detention center within a reasonable amount of time, um, that's when the rural exception comes in, and, and uh, each state needs to apply for that or renew whether they uh, whether they have that in, in place already. And you know, part of the requirement is that they need to make sure that these facilities maintain the sight and sound contact expectation uh, as well, and uh, making sure that youth and adult inmates uh, employees are trained according to work with both both the same both those populations. And um, you know, basically a rural removal exception certification, if it's applicable, you enter the state's name as it indicates on the right there and have your JJ specialist uh, uh, sign it and load it into our system. Uh, your compliance plans and resources certification, um, you know, based on the FY20 <coughs> determination or your FY19 compliance data, um, this is a form that you fill out now. It's very important that if you are, if you have, uh, if you have been determined compliant, with the three core, specifically DSO, jail removal, and site and separation, you are permitted to fill this form out. You can use this form. And as the form indicates on the right there, you just you, 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 you X mark, X check, whichever, which ones you're, you're compliant with. Now, if you are not compliant with any particular one, case in point, if you're out on jail removal, cyber sound, and any of the others, you have to do a complete plan to show how you're going to come back into compliance. So you have to submit a, a, a full plan to uh, get yourself back into uh, compliance. And the only one that everyone must submit this year as far as the plan is concerned is based on the interest of justice. You must submit an interest of justice implementation plan this year to meet the, uh, to meet the expectation. And we'll go ahead and pass the ball back over to Pete. Thank you so much, uh, DDA and Tina. So, oh, sorry, I went backwards. All right, red, racial and ethnic disparities. So, um, you know, we always like to reorientate people, folks, to our racial and ethnic disparities um, language. If you recall, um, in 2002, uh, we used to refer to it as the DMC, Disproportionate Minority Contact. Um, in 2018, we had the passage of the Juvenile Justice uh, Reform Act, and it changed the game. It um, made a requirement for us to, to do even more work when we're talking about working with racial and ethnic um, disparities within states' territories. So um, we make sure that you see the law here. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with the act, you can 
go to section 223A15 and read it in detail. So, the new process in which um, you've been working for, I think maybe the last two years at this point, and how we collect racial and ethnic disparity data is that we try to break the, the report down into three phases. So the first phase we're talking about are the data at the five points, right? So we want you to collect data at five uh, contact points. Those contact points being arrest, diversion, pretrial detention, disposition commitment, and adult transfer. When we say we want you to report data, right, we want to make sure that you are submitting two types of data to us, meaning that we want you to submit two chronological and consecutive data sets, each containing 12 months of data that are no more than three years older from the submission due date. It sounds confusing, I know, um, but what we try to do, what we ensure that we're doing is we allow you to submit data to us as long as it's consecutively, consecutively within the 12 month date period, right? Whether that's the traditional calendar year from January to December, um, whether it's your particular state's physical year, which could be at any 12 month period, or it, if it aligns to the federal physical year, which is traditionally, or has always been October 1 of a particular year to September 30th of that following year. The key though is that if you submit to us 2020 data, um, you also want to submit to us your 2019 data. We need a comparison year so we can be able to see the difference in your numbers. Um, we've also talked about in the session yesterday, there was a neat Excel sheet that CCAS provided to the field for you to use that really helps you frame your data to put them in tables. And that allows us to see how the percentage per each contact point over the course of those two years have changed, whether there's been an increase or a decrease. Uh, I think too, it's worth mentioning that there's a common misconception that you only have to give us four points. We need five points of data. Um, if you're unable to do those five points of data, we definitely want to understand why and what's happening um, to talk to you through that. On our next slide, we're going to talk about um, the other two elements of the, the red report. So the second part of the red report is the action plan. And the action plan, in a nutshell, it makes inference about the data, about what, what we're seeing. Um, what we saw in the past, it also talks about ways that you have defined success, because uh, we want to hear from you, how does your state or territory define success? We also want to look at any reduction goal that you may have set in the previous year, so we can be able to assess whether or not that goal was attained. Then uh, we ask you for um, your opinion or any TTA requests that you may have, if there's any assistance that is particularly needed. And last but not least, we always ask about any safeguards that were, you know, um, implemented within your state or territory to, um, to ensure the, the safety of the public, the juveniles, um, and, and, and the state. The third and final component of the RED plan is the outcome-based evaluation. Um, I think this is one of the, the best parts of the report, personally, because it allows you to look at the new data that you have, your new numbers, and, and you know, compare it against the, the previous numbers. We also then have you to make your own assessments about last year's goals. You know, what, what went well? What was great? And then we want you to identify those, those, those successes that you have. Share a story. Um, we want you to also tell us about any barriers. Let us know that the barriers that you, you, you're trying to, you, you've identified that you're working towards uh, to addressing. Um, we want you to talk about public safety, how you've been holding juveniles accountable, and have, have, having them have a crime-free life. Um, this is also another opportunity for you to tell us about any uh, additional TTA that you may need um, based off of the new numbers that you're looking at. And then again, the same thing with the safeguards um, 
to talk about that particular language. On this slide here, we have made sure that we um, provided you with all of the questions that are within the action plan and with the outcome-based evaluation so you can see it. Um, you also have received handouts in the field that gives you an insight of how we have our own scoring rubric to, you know, evaluate your responses in the action plan and the outcome-based evaluation. Um, Tina said this best yesterday. We're not looking for a dissertation, right? You know, we don't need you to copy and paste application material that you may submit somewhere else just so it can look full and wonky. We just really want to get to the meat of what's happening um, in your state regarding to racial and ethnic disparities. So succinct and sweet is the goal. All right. I talked earlier about the reporting deadlines, and I do want to make sure that I clarify for folks to know that when we're talking about the reporting deadlines, we are talking about the information that you're submitting within the compliance monitoring too, right? So those are all of the documents that we've covered today. Those are the data that you'll be entering into the compliance monitoring tool as well. If you need an extension for that, we need you to request the extension by tomorrow so we can try to um, approve it and get you all set up so we can receive your, date, your data no later than uh, August 12th. And your CMT, to recap, we need you to submit all your compliance data for your DSO separation and gel removal core requirement. We need to make sure that we receive your training policy certification. We need your compliance monitoring data certification form. If you are applying for or you are extending your or exemption for, for rural facilities, we need you to submit that form. We have to have your racial and ethnic disparities um, plan, the data and any supporting documentation that comes along with that. We also need your plan for, comp uh, for compliance monitoring to describe an effective system of monitoring. Um, we need your compliance monitoring universe. Uh, we need that form that indicates that you will be adhering to the interest of justice requirement. We need your compliance plans and resource certification, if applicable. And um, I think that's it in terms of the things that we're looking forward to reviewing um, in the CMT, the compliance monitoring tool. Where and how to apply. We provided you earlier today in the chat with the link to the solicitation. Uh, we also have this information here to kind of um, allow you to see uh, additional ways to apply. You, you can go to grants.gov or you can also apply through the Just Grant system. If you need any technical assistance with the application process in terms of applying, um, please reach out to these numbers that's provided here or um, to uh, the email address. And the support is there 24 hours, seven days a week. If you do have questions about some of the compliance related materials that we covered today, however, reach out to your program manager. The program manager is there to assist you. Um, if you're having difficulties downloading a form, um, if you're having difficulties accessing the compliance monitoring tool, the program manager are the people that you want to speak with. Deadlines. The application deadline is July 13th, 2021, 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time. For the data that you have to submit within the um, compliance monitoring tool, if you need an extension, please request an extension by tomorrow, which is June 18th. If an extension is granted, we will make sure that you have an extension up until August 12th, 2021, 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I hope that's not confusing for you guys. We have resources. We dropped these links again in, in the chat earlier, but if you need to look at the particular grant solicitation, the link is in the chat. 
and as well as if you need the individual files that will need to be placed within the CMT or in other places, you can click on the other link, which will take you to our webpage um, and will thoroughly walk you through where um, each file should belong and what you need to do to complete the file. We look forward to hearing from you. Um, I believe we're going to start scanning the chat for some questions momentarily, but there's multiple ways that you can connect with us. The best way is through your program manager who you already have a great relationship with, um, but you can follow us on Twitter, check us out on Facebook, check out what we're doing on YouTube, sign up for our newsletter, or just go to our site. All right. And uh, we're gonna open this up for questions and um, William, take it away. All right, thank you very much, Keith. Um, so it looks like folks are uh, populating questions and um, before I go into some of the questions that are coming in, just as a reminder to the audience, uh, please note that uh, you can get access to the document here um, at, in a PDF version. Uh, so I'll go ahead and, um, Keith, I'm going to share that document really quickly with folks because I had a couple of people to send me a direct message asking me to provide uh, uh, how to access this presentation. Uh, so shortly you all should see a box to pop up on your screen. And in that box, I'm going to go ahead and share the PDF of the presentation there. And that's where you can access uh, a copy of today's um, PowerPoint presentation uh, via PDF there. So it'll come up in that box. You simply click on that file and then select download and it should download directly to your um, device that you're joining from. And then um, I had another person to DM me earlier and they asked specifically about the recording. Um, I'll mention this at the end of the presentation, but yes, we are recording today's web event uh, and it may be posted on OJJDP's multimedia page. I will uh, have another announcement or reminder of that when we um, conclude today's presentation. So for those who sent me a direct message in regard to that, that's just a, a heads up about that, that we will uh, go ahead and have that um, possibly on the OJJDP multimedia page, and I'll make mention of that um, a little later. Now, um, as far as questions coming in about the content, um, there was a question that came in earlier, Keith, that someone, um, it looks like, had asked about the rural uh, uh, application process, but it looks like Tina went ahead and addressed that. Um, Tina, I wanted to check with you. Is there anything else that you want to maybe speak on that in regards to the individual who asked that particular question about the uh, rule application? Right. right. During this process, during the uh, compliance implementation process or the, the compliance uh, data submission process, we are only looking for a certification from those states who have already received approval from OJJDP for the rule exception process and the application process can be discussed in a more in-depth manner uh, via the OJJDP or SHRAD uh, program manager for that state. Okay, great. Thank you, Tina. <clears throat> Let's see. The next question we had to come in, um, Will providing a plan for eliminating the use of restraints be required along with the plan for implementing the, and this is in quotations here, interest of justice requirement? Um, a second related question came in saying, uh, will eliminating the use of restraints be a monitoring requirement for compliance? Um, thank you for that question. I do want to consult the team to see if anyone may want to respond to that. This is Tina, and I don't think that is a question that we're going to be able to answer right at this moment, and so it will be documented, um, and we can get back to you. Okay, thank you. Does the outcome-based evaluate, oh, I'm sorry, did someone else? 
Okay. Um, does the outcome-based evaluation need to justify and support the action plan? For example, if we need to adjust our plan due to barriers in implementing the last, last year's plan, should we discuss this under the outcome evaluation section or under the action plan? Okay. Um, I can definitely take, take a stab at that. Um, it should be addressed in the outcome-based evaluation. This is you doing your evaluation of the program. Um, you're seeing that a barrier was discovered, and now you are proposing a solution to address it. So the outcome-based evaluation will probably be the best place to have that particular discussion. Hi, Keith. This is Tina. I just want to add that if you put it in both places, because if you are talking about what you will be doing in the next year, and you want us to know this is what is uh, what you are going to be working on, and then in the outcome-based evaluation section, you talk about what your plan was for last year and how, due to whatever barriers, that the uh, your plan has had to be modified. You know, having it in both sections is definitely not um, frowned upon. Thanks, Keith. Okay. And just as a reminder to the audience, uh, please, um, when submitting your questions, be sure to send in your questions uh, to all panelists um, so that we can make sure that all of our panelists do send, see the questions that come in. Um, looks like someone messaged me directly, but again, to our audience, all, select all panelists prior to uh, sending in your question. Uh, is there a regulatory citation available for the OMB's um, rule definition? Uh, yeah, we, we have some, something that we can send out um, whomever um, requested that particular um, citation, just please um, uh, just shoot me an email and we'll, we'll respond to you so we can get that to you. Hey, William? Uh, yes. There was another question submitted by Kaylee Richards to all panelists. Do you have that question? Let's see. Okay, yes, I see this question here in this uh, next it looks like Kaylee uh, mentioned uh, that presenters, or she heard presenters say that all five RED data points, uh, that there's common misconception that uh, there's only a need of four, to submit four of the five. Uh, it says in the solicitation, data collection must occur for at least four of the five data points. Uh, so it sounds like there's some confusion around that. Um, uh, Keith, did you want to go over those um, data, uh, RED data points again for clarification purposes? I'll bring them on the screen, but I definitely think this is something that Tina probably wants to um, um, fully address. Hi, yes, yeah, this is Tina. And so when we're talking about OJJDP would definitely want all five of the contact data points that are possible. But we know and understand that not um, every time is the state able to collect um, data at maybe one of the uh, contact points that we have listed here. And in my example yesterday during that session, I talked about how some states do not have the ability to collect data around uh, perhaps adult transfers. And so, you are correct, in the solicitation it does say data collection must occur for at least four of the five uh, contact points. And so if you are able to provide us with an explanation as to why that fifth contact point you are not as a state able to collect data for, this is not something, but you provide us with at least four of the five, then it is not something that OJJDP or SHRED is going to say that you are not in compliance with. Does that make sense? And um, it looks like the, uh, I'll ask the 
participant who asked a question just to make sure. Okay, it looks like uh, Tina, they're saying thank you for the clarification there. Okay. And uh, it looks like we had another question. How can I get a copy of the RED spreadsheet template? Um, I'm not sure if you were on the call yesterday or not, but it will, it definitely can be provided to you, uh, Jacqueline. So it's not, um, oh, I believe you're Virgin Islands, right? So we can definitely supply you with that template or your program manager can supply you with that template so that um, you can have it. So it'll be made available. William, there was also a question from, I think, uh, Chris regarding, did I hear you say there is a form certifying compliance for the interest of justice requirement or are we submitting a plan for implementation of, of the requirement? And so, no, you're going to supply the plan for implementation of the requirement. There's no certifying form at this point because this is the first, uh, the first year being submitted. And then there was an additional question, what are you looking for in the interest of justice plan? Um, you know, when we've gone over this back in some of the other training, we talked about various things you wanted to look for, specifically uh, as it relates to uh, 11B of, of uh, 11133, uh, uh, 11, uh, section B, um, that speaks to the, um, that speaks to the interest of justice plan. Uh, and, and some of the forms that we even uh, supplied you guys, or at least uh, recommended that you could take a look at, uh, to get an idea on the things that you want to work with your court system with and uh, getting things implemented. But definitely connect with your uh, uh, program manager to get some additional details if you'd like. Um, thank you. And um, I, I do remember seeing another question that came up, and I, I don't want anyone to think that we're ignoring them. Um, if it's something that's state or territory or D.C. specific, um, We'll, we need you to work with your program manager and we will uh, address that issue. All right. Sorry about that. It looks like uh, my VDI froze on me and I was unable to get off of mute there. <laughs> I uh, just wanted to check. Are you all able to hear me? Okay. Mic check one, two. Yep, we can hear you. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Let's see. Um, it looks like uh, someone wanted to uh, get a, could you repeat uh, where the information is located for the justice implementation plan? I'm sorry, can you ask them to clarify, are they asking about the interest of justice? Yes, and I'll ask, uh, yes, it looks like they are. Um, Tina or Dee, did you want to take that again? I, I think it's just maybe just reiterated what you said about um, what we're looking for for the interest of justice. There is not an actual form or, you know, there was some guidance that was put out uh, several months ago, and then there was a special session where we talked about the interest of justice, and we talked about um, uh, how, um, how the state is going to have to implement the interest of justice, and so I'm not exactly sure when you're talking about where the information is located. If you'd like to have a copy of the, um, of the guidance that was sent out, or if you would like to have a copy of the uh, information, uh, you know, there was no specific information that was put out regarding the plan in and of itself, but uh, we could provide you with that information. We can provide you with that information. There's nothing that I can put in the chat right now that can answer what you're asking. Okay. It looks like um, someone wanted to ask, uh, when will we hear back about the extension request? 
And this is Tina again, uh, as quickly as possible. There's a process that your program manager is gonna have to go through. Hopefully you received the, uh, the listserv message that went out from CCAS talking about uh, what it is that is gonna be needed for you to submit to us, requesting of the acting administrator um, for this extension, but it's not, it, it's not, the turnaround will not take that long. I think the key here is just to ensure that your program manager has that request um, and, you know, just follow up with your program manager and they will let you know um, what we are in that process of the approval. And I think somebody did ask for them to be emailed a copy. If you can just reach out to your program manager um, and, and um, work out those logistics with your program manager, I think that will be the most efficient way for you to receive those materials that you're, you're requesting. Okay. Looks like um, some additional questions in regards to um, interest of justice came in here. Um, should the interest of justice plan be separated out or does it suffice if it is just added to our compliance monitoring manual? Another question, uh, should the interest of justice plan be uploaded in the CMT or with the other submission materials? Hi, this is D again. I'm, I'm sorry, I was having VDI. Same with you, uh, uh, Will, getting unstuck on the mute. Uh, I can answer this. So, uh, should this, yes, you can go ahead and include it within your compliance monitoring manual. That should be part of your manual uh, for review as well. And uh, as far as uh, the next question, as far as it being uploaded into the CMT, uh, yes, it is also uh, to be uploaded within the CMT. And then Keith can also speak to that uh, as far as um, where where specifically it can be located within the CMT. But yes, it is uploaded into the CMT. Yes, sir. And um, I hope that you were able to attend our CMT training. We are asking for these particular documents to be uploaded in the portion of the CMT that says additional documentation. Okay. Again, just a reminder to the audience, please uh, continue to submit your questions um, to the panelists. Uh, prior to submitting, please make sure you select all panelists and send in your questions so that we can document those questions as they're coming in. Uh, while folks are submitting their questions, uh, just another reminder to people, please uh, remember that uh, we are indeed uh, recording today's web event. It may be available on OJJP's multimedia page. And also, um, please note that we are allowing for you to get access to the PDF for today's uh, web event. Uh, it's in the transfer file. However, if you were unable to get access to it there, please note that there is a Google Drive um, where you can either click on the link or you can copy and paste it into the browser of your choice to get access to the PDF of today's presentation. Um, panelists, it looks like there aren't more questions coming in. Um, so while we wait maybe for any last minute uh, questions coming in, are there any final remarks uh, that any panelists may have and want to offer to today's audience? Um, no, I, I, if, if we are doing final remarks, I know Dr. Bradford wants to give some closing statements. Um, I just want to just say on behalf of our, our compliance team here in the State Relations and Assistance Division, we want to just thank you guys for um, allowing us to speak with you today about the compliance requirements as it relates to what will be required for completing your application. Um, it's been a pleasure um, these past few months talking with you all with, with all the requirements that we have and providing forms and getting feedback. Um, please know that we are dedicated to ensuring we answer your questions. If you don't answer your questions right away, it's because we need to sit back some time and just make sure that we have um, a consensus of what the next steps are and make sure that we have the proper policies and guidance to reflect um, that advice so that you don't feel like we're giving you the right around. So um, just thank you again for um, for your attention today and um, continuing to support us at JJ as we are um, all learning how to, to do this work we call Title II.
Hey, Great. can you hear me? Hello? Yep, we can hear you. We can hear you, Dr. Bradford. Right. <laughs> so, um, great job, compliance team, Keith, Tina, DDA. Uh, good to be um, back with you all. Uh, thanks, William, for being being a great host. Um, as the team has said um, uh, to our um, wonderful folks in the field, we'll definitely get you know some of your questions answered. Definitely checking with your program manager uh, if you're not sure. Um, you know, feel free to copy me on on, on things that you, you think are uh, definitely urgent so that I can um, help prioritize, um, making sure that you get answers to your questions that the team is definitely working on uh, a number of, of projects. And sometimes it may take them, you know, a couple days to get back to you. So if it's urgent, you know, you need something uh, a little bit more quickly or uh, you, you, you think our eyes need to be on it. Um, copy me. I am also playing catch up. Uh, I know several um, uh, state leadership uh, folks on this call have, you know, emailed me. So I'll get be getting back to you. I'm just returning from um, some much needed annual leave. Um, so I'll try to get get back to you on some of those questions. Um, I think the team sufficiently answered uh, enough of the questions today. Um, some of the work around interest of justice, as I've said before will continue to occur. We're setting up, um, you know, meetings. If you want a state meeting directly, certainly that will be, um, uh, that you know, scheduled and we can sit and, and have some discussions with, with you. Remember the listservs, uh, the general information that we were able to get out. Uh, we, we have, uh, prior to this meeting, um, discussed cataloging questions. For, so those, uh, for those of you who are on the Interest of Justice special session call um, that did not get your questions um, answered, we're trying to turn them around quickly. Um, for those who did get answers, um, we're turning them around directly to the state. Some of those questions will uh, uh, be created, uh, will create FAQs. Um, so those FAQs will be developed um, and, and sent out um, so that there's quick reference to, uh, I think, you know, questions that have common themes. Um, some of them were interest of justice, but interestingly enough, there were some that were not directly related to the interest of justice and or the, the new court holding facility requirement. Remember those, um, um, the implementation of those um, uh, um, are, are occurring now in the active period, which will affect next year or, or, or uh, the interest of justice December, uh, December coming. Um, in the next fiscal year. So um, there, there's some delays there uh, in terms of um, the interest of justice that, that we have a little bit more time to get nuanced. So we're we'll be developing, you know, templated checklists and things like that that will help compliance monitors um, have what they need in the field to ensure that they're um, getting, getting the uh, information accurately uh, monitored, um, but we're still working on a few of those things. But generally, um, most of the questions that we've gotten in, we're able to turn around answers to, and we'll turn around, turn those answers around to the specific states with um, uh, that ask those questions or those particular compliance monitors, or specialists that ask those questions. Anything more generally will be developed into an FAQ uh, and turned around. But I think most importantly, um, you know, because I think some of it uh, uh, is seems or is complex um, and may be nuanced for state, we will have state-specific meetings and or smaller um, working sessions. Uh, so those those dates will be coming. Uh, in terms of a plan, that's just what it is, a plan based on the information, um, the, the information that we've gotten out to you so far. And then anything else we need to follow up on pretty quickly, we will. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, we will get your approval for extensions turned around as quickly as possible. I will not stand in the way. Um, Y'all have a great afternoon. Passing the baton back to William. Great. Thank you, Dr. Bradford. Appreciate that. And uh, as a a uh, final reminder to uh, folks also remember that the response center information is indeed on your screen here. So you should be able to, uh, if you, there are questions uh, that you do have after today's presentation, please remember to contact the uh, NCJRS as well. Uh, we do have that information here on uh, this slide. Uh, another reminder to everyone, uh, please remember that if you would like to uh, find trainees and uh, user support, you can do so at the URL for the justgrants.usdoj.gov uh, uh, link here. Uh, please be sure to click on that or access the URL for Just Grants. Um, the information 
in that regards is on this particular slide. If you'd like to get in contact with INTAC, we have the information on this slide. Uh, please also uh, check us out on Facebook at OGJDPTTA for a list of upcoming trainings and additional resources. If you would like to get in contact with the uh, OJJDP TTA Help Desk, the telephone number and email address is on this slide. Uh, we encourage folks to please go check out the OJJDP um, website. Um, the website is here on this slide, ojjdp.ojp.gov, where there's a myriad of resources um, there. We also encourage folks to please sign up for the OJJDP Juve Just listserv where you can uh, subscribe and learn about upcoming events and important announcements. Uh, and also encourage folks to please go to the events page uh, on the OJJDP website where you can easily access and see about upcoming events um, that are coming down the line. Do you have a training? or technical assistance need, we encourage you to please submit a request for help via the OJJDP TTA 360 platform. You can access the platform um, at the URL here, tta360.ojjdp.ojp.gov. Again, uh, as I mentioned a couple of times before, uh, we do encourage folks to please go to the OJJDP multimedia page where you can view other webinars related to juvenile justice and child victimization prevention related topics. Any uh, supporting materials you would like to get access to, we are asking you to please uh, contact the TTA help desk and we can get you access to any of those supporting materials. Uh, please note this disclaimer that OJJDP makes every attempt to ensure material presented during this solicitation review webinar is accurate. However, in cases of errors, conflicts, or omissions, the information and requirements contained within the posted written solicitation shall take precedence. Um, on your screen, you should see a poll question that popped up. Uh, and thank you all for taking a moment just to complete that poll and provide additional information on how you plan to apply uh, this information uh, related to today's solicitation webinar. That being said, I'll go ahead and close this on out right at 12 uh, o'clock noon Eastern time here. Uh, thank you all again for joining today's web event. Have a wonderful afternoon. Take care, everyone, and thank you, panelists. Bye-bye.